So hopefully you've, you've copied down this link and you can go to it later to download um, a little document that I've created. If you are already a holistic practitioner, the, the secrets that I'm sharing in this document are things that can be very helpful and helping you to create even better success in your business and to streamline your business a little bit. So hopefully uh, you've got that marked down. And I will just very quickly copy and paste that link into the chat box. There we go. Okay, let's get started. Let's do the fun stuff now, shall we? <laughs> All right. Um, so here we are. Today we're talking about popular iridology, which I put in into that category, the North American or the Jensenian iridology, the stuff that we see predominantly on social media. And we're going to contrast that to holistic iridology, which I consider to be constitutional iridology. Now, I just want to underscore here that I have studied all of these styles. I've been a Jensenian iridologist. I'm also a constitutional iridologist. And so I do know these contrasts and comparisons, and I understand how they actually work. Now, it's interesting that most holistic practitioners, or no, let me rephrase that. Most iridologists consider themselves to be holistic. But I'm going to ask the question, are they really? Are they really genuinely holistic? Or are they just using a holistic tool, but practicing in a very almost modern medicine way? My name is Judith Cobb. I'm a master herbalist, natural nutrition clinical practitioner, a certified iridologist, and a certified comprehensive iridology instructor. I've been a health coach for 40 years now, and I've also been teaching practitioners for about 35 years. And I've studied and practiced lots of different styles of iridology over those years. And we're going to be looking at a lot of slides of iRides in the next few minutes. So Buckle up your seatbelt because this is going to be a whirlwind tour. Um, this is just my credentials in iridology, my most recent credentials, and my, my most currently valid credentials that I am a certified iridologist with IPA, and I am also a certified uh, comprehensive iridology instructor with IPA. As we get ready to launch into our discussion of Jensenian, basically Jensenian versus constitutional iridology, I just wanted to take a few minutes to promote the course that I've got coming up that I'm offering called Dynamic Iridology Assessment System. This is particularly for iridologists who want to, uh, for herbal holistic practitioners who want to streamline their practice. They don't want to sacrifice client care, but they, they're tired of doing unpaid overtime creating protocols for their clients because every holistic practitioner that I know pretty well does that. They see their client, they gather data and information, then the practitioner goes off and spends two or four or six hours creating a protocol for that client, but they're not getting paid for those hours and it's really sad. If you want to learn more than just iris markers, if you want to learn how the markers play off each other, how they interact together, if you want to learn how to create programs for your clients using the eyes and the client's history as the basis, if you want to be mentored in all of this, then this program is one that you want to consider. Okay, just, I've got, like I said, tech issues. I thought I had turned this off and I just need to do that. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Tech issues. Okay, um, and so I'll be sharing an information link with you later on, but uh, for now, just let that percolate in the back of your brain. The goal of the course is again, to teach constitutional iridology and how to use it confidently. So you can integrate it with what you already know about nutrition and or herbology to confidently create doable client programs in your paid client sessions. So I would love to know as we begin this, 
um, as we get ready to start talking about iridology, I'd love to know what your background is. Do you have training in iridology already? Are you a holistic practitioner with some degree of training in one way or another? If you would share that with me in the chat box, that would be divine. Alrighty, our next course start date is October 7th, so just next week. So again, if you want to receive, actually, if you want to receive information about the program, DM me your email address. Let me, give me your email address and I will send you the, the page that will give you all the details about the course. And um, for those of you who are watching this recording on IGTV, because we couldn't even stream to Instagram today, just DM me your email address if you want this information, because it's, it's uh, important that you understand, of course, what's involved with the course if you want to learn more about iridology. All right, let's hop in. You ready? Okay, so when I first started doing iridology in the very early 1980s, what was actually, I was introduced to iridology in 1979. The only type that was available in North America at that time was what I'm calling Jensenian or North American iridology. And we were using with Jensen this chart right here. This is the one that he was using that we were all using. These are some of the other more readily available iris charts and maps. And, um, and we can see that this one is very similar to Bernard Jensen's chart. This is the one that his daughter-in-law, Ellen Tart Jensen, has updated. So she took uh, Bernard's work and updated it. We've got various different ones. This is the first one that uh, was constitutional, but it, it has since been revised in many ways. But what I see happening with most iridologists is that they that use these charts is they fall into the trap of what we call popular iridology. And what that means is um, we we see that they look at these tiny little subdivisions, these tiny little markings within this chart, and they try to match that up on the eye and then they try to create a program based on that. Here's the problem. These charts are done on eight and a half by 14 inch paper. So they're big. These eyes on the charts are approximately six to seven inches across. And when we look at a tiny, minute, little detailed area, we're looking at an area that would be approximately two trabeculae wide. And I'm gonna show you what a trabecula is when we start looking at eye photos. It makes it nearly impossible to be accurate with this. And that's really, really important. We also see on these charts things like renal pelvis, I think, is on this chart. And we've got very tiny little divisions of the body, which uh, we don't actually have a herb for or a, tr a treatment protocol for. We have don't know what to do with for that little piece. We treat the organ as a whole. We treat the person as a whole. Now, we add to this the challenge that people are offering free iris readings online and you've probably seen those right as you as you've looked at these you've probably noticed that they focus on these little teeny details and we don't know if that that image was actually taken totally on the level and so that can actually shift what we're seeing by a bit and they're matching one sign to one symptom to one treatment, which is a very medical way of dealing with this. And Charo, thank you for sharing with me that you're a certified holistic health coach and you've been at it for five years. Woo! And you're a master herbalist. Oh, I love that. And you're working particularly with peri and uh, perimenopause and menopause. Love that. Ooh, we can talk deep about what you're doing today then maybe. This is the dynamic iridology map, and this is my development off of the one that my, my uh, constitutional instructor created. Simplified, what do you notice about this map? When you look at it and you think about what we've just seen on those other little charts, do you see that we're treating organs as whole pieces? Do you see that we're even looking at systems together so we've got sinus bronchioles and lungs as one color telling us it's one system that we want to work with the system within the body we've got the liver and the gallbladder and the liver showing up in three places because the liver spans across the body we've got the kidneys and the bladder in the same system everything that's blue 
is in the endocrine system. And so we're looking at this and we're looking at major organs, we're looking at systems, because these are the things that are going to impact and they're going to give us information about the client and their health, their potential health and wellness. Other things that we want to be aware of is that when Jensenian iridology was about the here and the now, and Jensenian said that the eyes, the iris itself, reflects exactly what's going on in the body now. We understand from research, from modern research, that the iris doesn't change in response to what we put into it. The iris is inherently or genetically set, and it gives us information that is about the body we're looking at, yes, but about three and four generations going back. A Jensenian iridologist would look at this eye and would say, this person has, has now congested lymphatics. We need to do a lymphatic flush and that's going to make these markers, these blobs go away. I would have told him as a Jensenian iridologist, iridologist that his skin was congested, that it wasn't offloading toxins properly, and that we needed to dry skin brush. Now, for all the people that I saw that had eyes like this, that we did lymphatic cleanses, that I sent them for lymphatic massage, that we did dry skin brushing with, I never once saw the eye rides change. Never once, not once, count it zero, right? Now, in constitutional iridology, when we see an eye like this, we look at the overall color. We have all of this white, which suggests this person is inherently prone to being over acid. So the eyes are teaching us what the inherent predisposition is, not the current chemistry. And so when we understand that, and when we understand that this person is predisposed to sluggish lymphatic circulation, we then need to ask questions. We need to understand what are our client's primary concerns, and we need to understand what they're already doing. Right? Because if this person is eating a diet that's high in white flour, white sugar, red meat, coffee, tea, things like that, then this over acid predisposition is going to be manifest. They're giving their body everything they need uh, to help their body make too much acid cir to circulate through their tissues, right? On the other hand, if this person has a very plant-based diet, with a little bit of protein, they're avoiding the dairy products. They're already doing the things that they need to to keep their acid production from their food sources low, which means they may not have any acid symptoms. When we look at acid symptoms, we're looking at mucous membrane issues, we're looking at asthma, allergies, arthritis, skin and kidney concerns, right? But if they've got the right diet, they may be preventing those, those symptoms from showing. Does that make sense? They still have the predisposition. They could still earn the right to have all of those problems. But if they're doing, if they're treating their body well, they can prevent those problems from ever surfacing. So as we look at the skin here and the skin zone and we say, we don't say this person's skin is congested. We ask, are there skin symptoms? Are there kidney symptoms? Because the skin is the third kidney. And if the skin isn't working, it's going to shunt more of the waste that it's supposed to get rid of over the kidneys, which can stress the kidneys. So we have to understand that interrelationship of the organs. And we ask the questions, are there symptoms? If there are no symptoms, the client may be doing everything they need to. I would still encourage them to dry skin brush because it's only going to help the skin work better, right? But it may not be critical right now. And so it's really important that we have a conversation with the client, that we understand what their symptoms are, what their diet is like, what their lifestyle is like, what the family history is. Take that information when we look at these eye photos and understand the eye photos in context, not as standalone crystal balls, because that's what they're not. Is this making sense? Every case I've ever seen that talked about 
the eyes changing where they put got it in print with before and after pictures. The authors have come through later and said they used color filters. And in some cases, they had the before picture of one person and the after picture was someone entirely different who had very similar eyes. Okay, those are all invalid comparisons. We can't do that. With this person, if they have the acid symptoms that we discussed, and we do the diet corrections, we do the lifestyle corrections, the eyes are not going to change, but what will change is their health. And that's what we want to have change. We want this person to have a well-functioning lymphatic system. We want them to have sinuses that are working well. We want them to have a respiratory tract that doesn't have to get inflamed every time it's exposed to something. Is this making sense for you? In the old Jensenian model, we would say this person was very toxic and needed some deep cleansing because we were taught that there was only true brown, which was velvet brown or dark brown. It didn't, wasn't this golden, didn't have these golden colors in it. And that this person needed some serious, serious cleansing. And, and that, that if we cleanse them enough, because there were these light patches in the iris, that these eyes would actually turn blue. I used to teach that. I used to put people on high powered cleanses and they would be compliant and it would be really, really hard for them to stick with, but they would do it. And we would never see their eyes change. We would see their health improve, but we would never see the eyes change. We were teaching with that as well, that these rings around here, they call them stress rings. And that these suggested this person is under a lot of stress right now and might even be headed for a nervous breakdown. That's scary information to have told to your face, right? And again, it never bore out in clinical work. We now know that this pigment is all inherent. It's all what's been passed down through the generations. We know that it doesn't go away. We can cleanse and cleanse and cleanse, and this is not going to go away. This gives us information about the person, about how they're put together, about things that we need to be aware of and ask questions about, and how we need to guide them with their diet and so on. Each base color or constitution, so we've looked at the blue, this is what we would call biliary. We're gonna look at a, a true brown or a hematogenic eye next. Each iris constitution has a different set of common inherent predispositions. So this one has a predisposition towards some liver challenges. What are those challenges? We don't know until we have a conversation with the client. Um, the, the blue eyes have that inherent predisposition towards having too much acid. With this eye, we're going to ask questions about liver, and most of your clients don't know what the liver does. So we have to break it down into symptoms they're familiar with, right? And we need to then ask them about their diet and their lifestyle in relation to how that would affect the liver. And so we want to be very aware of our, our clients' concerns, and we want to educate them about how to support their liver, especially through diet. Now, these eyes are never gonna turn blue. We could fast this person, we could cleanse this person, we could do all kinds of almost torturous things with this person, but these eyes are not turning blue. This is a true brown eye. This is what we call a hematogenic eye. And again, when we look at the eyes, the, uh, the base color gives us a, a foundation of information to work with. Brown, regardless of whether it's a that like we saw in the previous image or in this image, brown always suggests a predisposition towards liver imbalances, liver challenges, and blood challenges. And that can be lots of different ways. But we have to ask questions. The eyes do not give us disease names. They do not give us, tell us where the break, what the breakdowns are. They only tell us where the breakdowns are. As it turns out, this woman likely has a liver predisposition that leads her to have a challenge methylating her B complex. Now, Charo, I'm excited that you specialize in women's work because you probably understand the MTHFR defect then. And with that, this client likely had that defect and so, or that um, genetic 
abnormality, that genetic variation is probably a better way of putting it. She came to me with her husband and they wanted to get pregnant. They'd been trying for three years. They'd had no success. And the doctors just kept throwing metformin at her because she was type two diabetic or insulin resistant and um, had, P had PCOS as well. And so with all of that, when we looked at her eyes, I'm, hmm, I suspect you might have problems handling your bees. We used a methylated B with her. We did the dietary corrections to support the liver. And we did the dietary corrections to uh, support her with MTHFR. You, uh, Charo, I'm so excited that you know about MTHFR. It is so exciting to work with. And um, she conceived, had a beautiful baby boy in a totally uncomplicated pregnancy and delivery. Jensen would also have said this woman has liver issues just from these images, would, would likely have given liver support. But as you know with MTHFR, it's not just any liver support they need. They need specific liver support. There are herbs that work, there are supplements that work, but it's not every liver herb that works and it's not every liver supplement that works. So we needed to know which ones to use and understanding from her eyes that she likely had, PC, had MTHFR made it possible for us to do the assessment we needed. So constitutional iridology is a holistic assessment tool but it, it's an assessment tool. It's not a diagnostic tool. It requires that we have a conversation. And it sounds, Taro, like you like to have conversations with your client. You want your client's input and you want to understand them. And that's exactly what we do with this. This actually adds a layer of information, but it speeds up the process ultimately. So then we look at some different things with the eye. So here we've got a beautiful blue eye again. Now we're going to look at the little flecks of color that are in here because these flecks of color give us all kinds of information. Now our computer monitors all show colors differently. And I know I've got three computers. I know, get a life. Um, and every one of them shows the, these flecks a slightly different color. One of them shows them very orangey one of them shows them rusty and this one shows them light brown. And so each of those colors actually means something different. So we would never assess true color from a photo. We would want to see the client face to face and we would want to use a very white pen light to actually look at their eyes with a magnifying glass to assess what is the color. Because when we know what color these are, then we know what direction to take the questions. Right. So North American iridologists would say this is accumulation of toxins and those toxins need to be cleansed out. I'm going to tell you and that if you cleanse the toxins out, these pigments are going to go away. Not true. Absolutely not true. These pigments, again, teach us about different things that could be out of balance depending on what color they are. So the color teaches us about the organ of origin. What organ wants to be out of balance? The placement tells us which organs are going to suffer the most because of those imbalances, right? And so that gives us tons of information. We can then ask questions about the organ of origin based on the color and the organ that struggles because of that based on the placement and get that very quick but much deeper understanding of what is going on in our client's body and then know how to support that. Again, we want to be very aware of these colors, but it's really hard to do the color assessment via computer. And people on, that are on Facebook don't understand when they're doing these online assessments, they don't understand how radically different the colors reproduce on every, every electronic device. And they're making these claims that are just like, oh my goodness, ask a question, will you? All right, so you can tell I've got a soapbox about that. Again, in North American iridology and ginseng, this eye would be extremely toxic and would require an incredible amount of cleansing. Again, they would talk about this person being under an amazing amount of stress. And they would say this person has a lot of cholesterol in their system. And, um, and they would say that it's from a sodium imbalance and they would call this a sodium cholesterol ring. In constitutional iridology, we again know that the colors teach us about inherent predispositions. So this eye actually has in behind here 
a little bit of a blue base behind it. So this is going to be that biliary mix that we talked about. And so, oh, I'm so glad you're loving this so far. And I love that you're a health investigator and that you ask questions. That is such a missing piece for most practitioners. Nicely done. So this is going to be that hematogenic eye. It's in behind this white, these fibers are quite white, which means that we treat that part like a blue eye. We've got the browns and the golds in here, which means that we've got the liver involvement and maybe some kidney involvement, but we've got this as well, which shrieks liver, right? So we've got to ask questions. We look at this ring, which again, may have to do with cholesterol, but it actually has more to do with liver function. And when we understand all of that, we know which, which direction to take our questions. These rings actually suggest more than the, that the person is under stress right now, that this person likes to be busy. They like to make lists. They like to always be productive. And they're the kind of person that has their to-do lists often written down, sometimes in their head, and through the day they go check, 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 and the day is a success when they've checked them off. But what we also know about those people is that they often do need some extra support for the nervous system, and we might choose, based on the eye, a herbal version. We might choose foods that are high in nerve nutrients, or we might choose to go with vitamins and minerals instead based on what we see in the eye, based on what our conversation with our client is telling us. Again, it's only when we have that conversation with our client do we understand what direction to take this. Because there are many roads that lead to the solution. And there might even be a few good roads that lead to the solution for this client. But our goal is to choose the best. And it's not to give them everything they need to keep them healthy for the rest of their life. It's to, because that's an, an unmanageable program that guarantees client failure. It's to give them enough information to take them to the next level. What is the amount of information they need that they can really work well with for the next month to get some results? And then we can take that that they've accomplished and again, look at the eyes in the new light of what their symptoms are now to help us understand what do we need to do with them to take them to the next level. This is how we use iridology to create long-term client retention. And it's not to say that we necessarily are going to have our client coming back every month for the rest of their life. Because what will happen is after three or four or five, typically four to six appointments, we will have the client in a place where they've learned what they need to do and they are doing it and they're feeling really good and they don't need you anymore right now. So they're going to drift off and you're going to encourage them. And you're just going to say, okay, we're not going to book a next appointment with you now because you're doing so well, but you know how to reach me. And when you need me, come back. Because in three or four years, as their body changes, as it ages, oops, there's that word, they're going to need you again. They're going to come back and they're going to go, man, now I've got this symptom. And then you can go through the process again of three or four or five appointments, get them totally on track send them off for a few more years. And because you are doing it this way, they're now talking you up to everybody they know, and they're starting to fill your appointment book for you, which is so much fun. In North American iridology, this iris, they would say, you've got parasites, you've got parasites in your brain. Oh my goodness. And we're going, I don't think so, Tim because we've got these rings coming around here. We, we know this person likes to be busy. They kind of, they will bring stress onto themselves by trying to do more than they should. These lines add fuel to these lines. So when we see these, this is teaching us about their nervous system, not parasites. Parasites are not genetic. Parasites do not change your DNA. Is this making sense? The eyes are genetic. They show us what is in your DNA. They don't show us what's not. So if the parasites can change your DNA, then that's going to be programmed into your eyes. But we know parasites don't. So this person instead is very 
spent a lot of time functioning in the sympathetic nervous system, right? You probably remember what that means. They're always ready for the next crisis. They're always living on the edge. That adrenaline is ready to go boom and help them get through the next whatever. And they will often take things that are actually kind of small and let them making a mountain out of a molehill thing, right? Because their B vitamins, their nervous system are out of balance. As we give them the right dietary directions, maybe the right supplements, some lifestyle coaching, we bring that into a better balance and suddenly they're not making a crisis out of something that was just a hiccup. Does that make sense? And so again, our clients only need to hear what will take them to the next level. And that is so, so, so important. So important. Because we want our clients to be successful. We don't want to snowball them. Charo, I don't know where you live. I don't know if you have snow where you live. Do you know what it means when I say we don't want to snowball them? If not, we'll come up with another analogy for you. The next layer after color and after pigment that we need to consider is the placement of the fibers. Remember I used the word trabeculae a few minutes ago. You, okay, you, you know what snow is good. You know, if you live in Southern Florida, you probably don't know what it means to say snowball. And so, um, oh, born and raised in Pennsylvania, now in South Texas. Okay, so you don't have snow now, but you did in Pennsylvania. Alrighty, perfect. So now we're talking about fibers. When we talk about trabeculae, that is these individual strands that we see in the eyes. We only see these in the blue eyes and in the biliary eyes. We do not see these in a true hematogenic eye. When we see the fiber structure, this gives us more information. These are inherent. Jensenians would say every one of these is a current physiological, pathological problem that is happening right now. Disagree 177%. And they would say you do the right things, these are going to go away. They're going to get smaller, they're going to disappear. We're going to see healing lines come up in the middle and they would call these lines in here healing lines. What we now know instead is the iris is made up of layers of fibers and so we can have a, a, a fiber on the top layer that's doing a leaf shape and the fibers that we see inside that are actually fibers that are down a layer they're not coming they're not going they've always been there okay um, because these are inherent they are not going away but they, again they give us information about family history so if this family if this person has a symptom if they come in saying i have these massive headaches all the time and my hormones are just feel like they're always loopy like i'm never in control of my hormones they're ru ruining my life they're running my life we look at their eyes and we go yeah i get it i get it who else in your family had headaches who else in your family had really unbalanced hormones and they're going to rattle off a list of every aunt, uncle, and relative they've got that has these problems. And you are going to be able to say, the headaches are likely related to the hormone imbalances. Now let's talk about what your hormone imbalances look like. Let's talk about what foods can be causing that. Let's talk about which vitamin and mineral imbalances can be causing it. Let's begin recrafting for you a new lifestyle that's going to bring things back into balance. So we actually get control of the hormones and thereby get control of the headaches because the headaches are not the problem, they're only the symptom. Make sense? So again, with this person, we're going to be asking about those kinds of things and we are going to be solving problems for them because we're looking at the body as a whole. We're not slicing and dicing into individual little pieces and, and recommending individual things for each one. And that's what you see online, right? They'll talk about, you have a, they call it a lesion. We call it a lacuna. I don't like the word lesion. You have a lesion in your pituitary. And for that, you need to do da, 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 da. And it's like, no, no, no. We need to balance your hormones because you've got all kinds of stuff going on with your hormones inherently and it's probably because your diet's not where it belongs 
You may have higher needs for certain nutrients than other people do, and those needs aren't being met. So in North America, again, every marker, every marker, whether it's a pigment, whether it's a shape in the fibers or a shading in the fibers, like even these, every different color, every different little thing in the eye is a current pathological problem that needs to be addressed right now. It takes hours and hours and hours to do a Jensenian assessment because you are nitpicking every single little fiber, even these ones that are running sort of sideways. And then you're, you're uh, listing a solution for every single problem and then you are, this is gonna sound really crude, but the truth is you're vomiting all of that all over your client and they can't do that. In holistic, in constitutional, we again look at the eye as a whole and we say, okay, how do these all work together? What are the symptoms my client has brought in? What information does the eye give me about the symptoms? How is the eye explaining those symptoms? What is the family history here? What, what is the root of the problem? Because you and I both know that the symptom is only that. What the client has brought in is what they think is the problem, is always only a symptom. We need to trace that back to figure out what is the root. Sometimes we have to give a band-aid for the symptom to help our client be comfortable while we're working on that really, really deep level to get to the root, right? Does that all make sense? I'm betting it does, yeah, yeah. So in North American, this person would be described as having a weak constitution. How many ways would that make your day for someone to say to you, Charo, you've got a weak constitution. Like, oh my goodness, just shoot me now and get it over with, right? That makes it sound like this person is doomed to a life of being fragile and delicate and sickly. Constitutional instead calls this the um, excellent, excellent, so glad you do. That's excellent, Charo. When, when we look at this through constitutional eyes, we call this a but that was not meant to be a, a not even a pun. Um, this is a connective tissue type. This person is a little more prone to having loose, loose collagen structure in their body. And when we understand that, we then understand what we need to do. And you know that collagen is about how well they digest protein, right? And so we need to coach this person especially on their food choices and their digestion. In this kind of an eye, every marking, every shape we see is not important. Again, we look at the overall, the overall to see how that is. And then we listen for those symptoms that tell us that maybe one of these areas might be a concern. Again, we want to strive to understand that interrelationship of the markers how is the di how's the digestion program to work? How is the assimilation programs to work? What does the endocrine system have to say about all of this? How efficient is the body at transporting and using the nutrients, right? And so it's, it's almost like the eyes are like a Star Trek tricorder, right? And we haven't gotten bogged down in every little detail. When we do holistic hybridology, Using the map that we looked at at the beginning is the very last step. The very, very last step. Because we don't want to slice and dice and dissect. We often don't even need to go there because we want to understand the person as a whole, physically, emotionally, every way we can. We can always go back to the map whenever we need to. It's not the critical place. When we understand iridology like this, we can actually do some of our basic assessment from two feet away without magnification. As we want to get deeper into it, then using a, um, a magnifying, a lighted magnifier is helpful. And if we really want to get into it and use photos that we can blow up on our, our computer screens, then of course we want special equipment for that. But we never start with buying special equipment because the good equipment that's worth buying is more than $99, just saying. Okay, so iridology guides us 
in the questions we ask. It deepens our understanding of our clients. So again, just going to spend just a minute here. Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology Assessment System is for you if you're a holistic practitioner who really wants to shorten the amount of time it takes to create your client programs. If you want to have that deeper understanding of your client, of their body, we touch, a, there's a bit of emotional iridology that we do in the program as well. And we, we, if you're the practitioner who wants to really be efficient without sacrificing client care, then the program is for you. The next course again starts on October 7th. And um, again, if you're interested, you can just DM me your email address and I'll make sure you get the information on the course so you can have a look at it and see if it would be a good fit for you. So Charo, you know, the fun thing with these uh, webinars that I do is they usually have a very, uh, we have a very small group. This is a very niche group that I'm talking to, right? Practitioners who want to to do something different with their business and take it to another level. And so you've been my my sole attendee today, and I thank you for being with me. Any questions about anything we've talked about today? I am absolutely interested in this. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, because it's just you and me, and there's nobody else on this and we aren't live streaming this anywhere if you even want to just if you want the course information and you want to shoot me your your email address here in the chat box you can i don't share the chats with anybody and um if i when i post the the webinar on various places it does not include the chat so that's an option um or you can hook up with me oh there you go there you go okay I will make a note of this and I will send you the information um, right away as soon as we're off today so that you can have a look. So thank you so much for being with me. That has been a ton of fun. I've appreciated the interaction and um, hopefully we'll see you in the class when it starts. Have a fabulous day. You are more than welcome. Bye for now.